Hi there, and welcome to the Design and Style podcast, a podcast for designers, by designers. And I'm your co-host, Rachel Moriarty with Rachel Moriarty Interiors. And I have with me, Miss Dixie with <laughs> Dixie Willard Design. Designing Dixie, also known as Designing Dixie. Right. Um, and today we are going to talk about something that is really, really, really important to me. Um, and it's personal style and personal and, and really self-expression mm -hmm. and why it matters um, if you are a personal brand. Yeah. Or as a solopreneur, as an online, uh, you know, we, we have online businesses now. Um, and I'm going to go over number one. Number one. Do it. Number one. Let's just jump right in. I think that's so important. number one is because you are a personal brand. Mm -hmm. Should we go through two through 10? Yeah. Number two. Because, because you are a personal, personal brand. brand. <laughs> <laughs> and three, because, because you you're a personal, personal brand. <laughs> Everybody now. <laughs> Number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Because you're a personal brand. Exactly. Right. I'm actually doing a little series about this. I think you, you've you hopped on maybe yesterday. Yeah. Um, so as of recording, I'm doing like a five-day challenge about this on my Facebook page. And it's called Creative and Confident. But, you know, I call it Creative and Confident, but I, I say you could be corporate and confident too. Yeah. Um, because you're always representing yourself and you do that with you know through self-expression and your clothing so um one of the things that i was talking to dixie about offline we do have little offline chats is something i hear i'm in a lot of uh, interior design groups and i have been for several years and i hear about uh, how designers are so such perfectionists and if you're a designer out there listening, you may identify with that word. Mm -hmm. um, you're a perfectionist when it comes to your website. You're a perfectionist when it comes to your blogs and what you are, and your designs, especially your designs. It's like you'll tweak, oh, yeah. and tweak and tweak and tweak the thing to death. But when you show up, uh, you know, whether it be online or just out, you aren't that, that perfectionism doesn't flow through. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think? I mean, you see that too, Dix. Right? I do. And that's one of the things that I've always been, I'm, of course I'm weird. So, you know, take this <laughs> with a grain of salt. We hope you're weird like us, by the way. <laughs> yes. If you're not weird like us, we're sorry. <laughs> and sad. Um, but for me, there are just some things that I will not wear outside of the house, like sweatpants or pajama bottoms. You will never see me wearing. I take that back. There was one day, <laughs> there was one day that I did and it was because I was having surgery <laughs> and I wore sweatpants to the hospital and I wore them back home. That's it. I, I just, for me, that's one of those things that I just can't do. Now I wear jeans 95% of the time. So do I, Dix. And I think that's what people don't get. Like some of the resistance I hear is, well, I'm casual, you know, yeah. or I like to wear jeans. Mm -hmm. So do I. I live in my jeans. I call them yoga right. jeans because I, they, that's how like comfortable they are because I'm sitting in them all day. Um, I have a pair of work jeans that are so comfortable. I have to force myself not to wear them when I'm not working so that I don't wash all of the color out of them because they'll get dirty faster. <laughs> I wish I was lying, but they're super comfortable. You don't have to be yoga pants or I don't know. I, I just could never. It's, it's a personal thing for me. I could never. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Well, a, I, you know, yoga pants are a uh, privilege, not a right. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody is meant oh, yeah. to be running around in yoga pants. Yeah. You don't want um, any yoga pants, ladies and gentlemen. No. Especially those Lululemons. They are like, they're awesome, but they're so see-through. I'm like, if you don't have perfection under there. <laughs> 
nope, 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 so that's, so that's one thing, you know, we, we were joking about the, the whole personal brand, but we're not, we're also not yeah. because we were, you know, we kind of outline what we're going to talk about and it's, it really always comes back to your personal brand and you are always representing yourself as a personal brand. Um, and with social media now, you, you are oh, the yeah. face of your business, you know, mm-hmm. and literally you know, and figuratively, it's literally, not just- yeah. I You're know. there all the time. You're there all well, we are. I don't know if everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> we did say we were weird. So. Um so that is the that's the big thing. Um there is, you know, we Dixie and I both have, you know, our personal profiles on Facebook, our business profile on Facebook, and they're really the same. There is no, there used to be a separation, like you could have your personal profile and it was one thing and then you had your business page and, and that was another. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. There's so much crossover and the way that Facebook promotes um, you and recommends you to other people based mm-hmm. on your mutual friends you, they can land on either page. And uh, for me, they land on both. There's, you know, mm-hmm. th- there's some people on my business page that I'm not friends with. And there's people that I'm friends, you know, friends with on my personal page who I don't personally know through mutual business people that aren't on my business page. So it's all really, I just treat, I just treat them both as one really. Oh yeah. Now I've got a lot of stuff that is set to where only my friends can see it on my personal mm-hmm. page, mm-hmm. but, um, I've got people that I'm friends with that I would like to give me referrals to other people. And mm-hmm. so I can't put, I mean, I could, but I just, I just want to present myself as the person, the, the professional that I am. Yeah. Without it being. I don't know. What am I trying to say here? Right I don't know. Use your hands. Do like a, do a Rachel. When I get stuck, I'm like, if you if you're just listening to on SoundCloud, you can't see it, but we're like using our motioning our hands to like get the words out. Point across. Um, what were you say? So on my well, what you'll find on my personal page on Facebook, you will find if I'm going to post photos of my family, mm-hmm. it won't be on my business page. I right. that none of that's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if we're doing a road trip or going on vacation or somewhere or just, you know, my daughter looking cute, that's going to be on my personal Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Um, and my Instagram doesn't have any, any of that. So I just treat, yeah. I just treat uh, face my personal Facebook page as that. So back to personal brand. Um, your personal brand, uh, that perfection that you have and that impeccableness that you do on everything that you put out into the world, I think should, Dixie and I both think that should flow through actually. Yeah. Um, because what happens is it's confusing if you have somebody that finds you, goes to your social media, goes to your mm-hmm. Instagram, goes to your Facebook, sees this impeccableness about you, and then, you know, all of a sudden you're kind of slopping it around, you know, either when you present yourself at the house or as if you're, you know, showing yourself either in lives on Facebook mm-hmm. or um, even in photos of yourself. If you're not putting the best of yourself out there, it, there's a disconnect. And, and it's all about, social media is all about creating a know, like, and trust. And so mm-hmm. there's, when there's a disconnect, there's a little something that goes, mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Now, I will say that like, if you're on a job and it is a hot, oh my gosh, job, Sometimes yes. it's good to show that aspect of it. That's I, not what we're saying. No, we're no, no, saying no. That, you know, just rolling out of bed and popping up on a live feed is probably not the best way to go about things. Exactly. Make yourself pretty. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be super glamorous either. And not glam. Like, that's not what we're talking about. And that's the whole thing where I am talking about on the challenge um, this week is, you know, Literally, I am one layer from, so right now I'm wearing, I'll just stand up 
for the YouTube people, but I'm wearing khakis because I get, mm -hmm. I get the question about neutrals. I'm wearing a brown tank top. And so I, I dress myself like I design. I start with a neutral foundation. So think about if you walk into a room, designers, and you have your beige walls and you have your brown leather sofa. So that's the start, right? And then mm -hmm. you go in and depending on the client's personality, you add in the layers, right? So I have clients that say, I don't like color. I'm afraid of color. Na so then I'll use navy because navy is also neutral. So yep. right now, because I, I, I live streamed yesterday on Facebook and I was getting people saying, well, because they know me and they know I'm super colorful and like saturated colors and patterns. They were talking about neutrals. And I said, well, you know, when I woke up this morning, I said, I'm going to I'm going to dress in all neutral tomorrow and just show that neutral doesn't have to be boring, you know? So I and threw you on can't see Rachel right now. She is anything but boring. She <laughs> looks, you still look like yourself even though it's not tons of different colors. You, right. You're still yeah. on brand. Yeah. And so I have a vintage kimono on, which is like, we'll just say it's a robe. Let's just say vintage kimono <laughs> is literally a robe. So I'm walking around in khakis, a tank top and a robe, and mm -hmm. I have a neutral scarf on my head mm -hmm. and some neutral jewelry. And I can tell you, I can promise you if you're on SoundCloud, I do not look boring right now. Okay. Um, so that and I just did it to prove a point because you can still be per somebody that's you know loves neutrals that is afraid of color even and there are ways to do it we do it in people's homes all the time and right. see that's the part that I don't get because I was getting dressed this morning and I was like okay beige walls and a dark brown sofa I have clients that I come in all the time and they're like help me from the brown they want save me from the brown right. and they'll mm -hmm. have travertine and they'll have wood floors and they'll have leather sofas and they'll have beige walls and all kinds of just wood you know stuff and they, they want to be rescued from that. So from that point, it's my starting point, depending on the client, I'll either bring in pops of colors and mm -hmm. make it a little lighter and fun. I'll bring in some light whites, you know, just to like lighten up the heaviness of it. Or if they're afraid, I usually will use navies, some, you know, lighter, lighter, like not white, but you know, creams. Um, and then what I do though, is I sneak in color with books Yes. and I sneak in color with fresh plants. Mm -hmm. So you could do the same thing with your wardrobe where you're, you know, creating a neutral palette, but maybe you do, maybe you put some, you know, coral colored shoes on. Well, that's even, like I mean, that. If we look at it like that, it's just like my office, which if you can't see right now, dude, you need to go check out the YouTube video, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, my office is, in fact, my whole house, I just, it's painted white because I enjoy white walls and please excuse my dog's barking. <laughs> They're getting a little rowdy out there. But my office is white walls, a dark wood bookshelf, just neutral wood floors, which if you leave it at that, sounds really boring. But then I've got some colorful artwork behind me. I have a teal leather chair. Yes. I have a bright red rug. Yeah. Um, and I've got. All I've of never seen the books. red rug. No, I'm not going to show you right now. No, you have to show it needs me. Needs to be vacuums, but I will. I will show you. It's, Maybe take yeah. some pictures of that. Yeah, yeah. I love that teal chair. It's got to be one of my favorite chairs on the planet. It's. Oh, I um, love it so. Yeah. And then is your, your, I know you have a metal artwork behind mm -hmm. you. Is that, is it in blues as well? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's actually it's in teals. Is it in teals? Oh, okay. teals? And then it's got pops of white and orange and yellow. Oh, pretty. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So that, you know, and blues, teals are pretty neutral, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you want to, there are like, teals that are more like towards a turquoise that are really poppy. But if you're a little afraid of color, just pop in a little blue. Yeah. Blue is so easy. And even, yeah. even some greens are not that. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> approach your clothes like you would, you know, a doing a room. That's the thing. That's what I don't get. So, you know, start with your neutral foundation 
or, or however, whatever your process is, use it on yourself. Like I, I do, I go in and I am that person that will neutralize everything. And then I layer in color and texture and pattern. That's just my design process. But whatever your process is, you know, maybe take that approach to your, to your mm -hmm. clothing because that's, that sort of, you're communicating something to your client or your prospects, really. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Now, Dixie, you had a great point, which I hadn't thought about. Um, Dixie goes to BNI meetings. Yes. And what did we decide mm -hmm. that was? Business Network. Business Network International. But Business Network International. So if you are a you know solo out there, it's a great. You want to hop into some mm -hmm. like in person networking. That's a great one. Um, and they actually talked about this. So yeah. You know, I'm always talking about being creative and com confident, but you can be corporate. You need to be corporate and confident too. And this is perfect mm -hmm. because there are so many corporate professionals in BN BNI, right? Yeah. It's not like creative. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what did they talk about? Was so that the last? It's, it's funny because it's one of those things that you hopefully know already, but it, it was a point that they made. It was, it was just a, a beginning training, like, welcome to BNI. These are the things you should know. But one of the points that they made was don't show up to the meetings or to one-to-ones with other members looking like you just rolled out of bed. You should dress like how you'll be dressed to see your clients because the person you're talking to, the people who see you, However they see you is what they think you're going to show up as to their friend, to their boss, to whomever they've recommended you. And they're not going to recommend somebody that they don't think is going to show up and represent them right. Because it's it, an extension. Yeah, yeah, it's a reflection of, of them. So just something to keep in mind that people are more comfortable recommending you when they know that you're going to show up as a professional. And again, it can be casual and comfortable and still professional. Absolutely. This goes to, so funny that when you said that, it just triggered something. Um, when, you know, we, we live online and we are on a lot of online groups. Um, some of the groups that I belong to are just groups of creative entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. The other ones are groups of interior designers. Um, and some are coaching groups. And one of my coaches, Alain Scott, I was just on her podcast. Um, I posted it on my page. But her group is full of uh, soulful creative entrepreneurs. And I am the only designer in there. And so when we hop on a coaching, a group coaching call, we do it through Zoom. And it's kind of the thing where you can see everybody. And sometimes I'm surprised at how people mm -hmm. will show up to these things. They, you know, you're on Zoom, you're in your house, you're in your living room or whatever. Um, like you and I are right now, actually. Right. Exactly. Just like this, because we're on Zoom. Just like that. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm surprised that people will not, they, they, I mean, literally, they don't even pay attention to how they're presenting themselves yeah. to other businesses. And or if they realize that they're not looking great, they just will make it to where nobody can see what they look like. Yes. The black like, out the screen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which you just lose something that way. You do. You do. And in this group, I mean, I have been, I have uh, been asked to, because of this, I was asked to present um, on, you know, I did like an office mm -hmm. presentation, kind of like you did in another group that you and I belong mm -hmm. to. Um, but, you know, if I would, wouldn't represent myself as a professional creative entrepreneur, you know, nobody would be asking me to present anything. Yeah. And, you know, from that, other people in the group redesigned their offices just based on, you know, the presentation I gave and they sent me photos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, you're always positioning, positioning yourself. Oh, yeah. You know, especially business to business, because um, when you're in these Facebook groups, I feel like there is, um, people get this weird sense, there is a safeness about private groups. Right. 
but you are among your peers and you are among mm -hmm. other referrers. So I have had other designers refer uh, jobs to me if they're on the East Coast and they're like, hey, somebody reached out to me and they're in California mm -hmm. and I know you're there. It's because of how you're coming across online. They don't know anything else about you. Yep. You know, all they have to go off of is how you present yourself online. Mm -hmm. And so I have been actually recommended from other designers uh, to projects here in San Diego. I would recommend you. I would totes recommend you. <laughs> so nerds. <laughs> we are, we crack ourselves up. That's terrible. Terrible podcast hosts. Yeah, but it's uh, so much fun. It is. Now, I, the other one I just want to bring up before mm -hmm. we, we wrap up here um, is I get stopped when I'm out and about. And so I was telling Dixie what's funny is, I, you know, you've heard me say it over and over. I am an introvert. I am a really, really big introvert. Um, and to me, the antidote of being such an introvert is actually dressing like an extrovert. So <laughs> it's just my way of moving in the world, you know? And so, um, because I am a person who would be perfectly happy being unnoticed, mm -hmm. you know, I would be perfectly happy just going about my day and being unnoticed. You know, that is actually where I, you know, just under the radar. Yep. Um, but I am out and about a lot. I'm shopping for clients. I'm at Home Depot. I'm at mm -hmm. Home Goods. I'm at, you know, any, anywhere. It could be anywhere. Um, furniture showrooms, stuff like that. Uh, you know, I was at a sourcing carpet last week and I had a guy that was shopping for carpet come up to me and just another customer. And he was like, Hey, can you help me? You know, not even asking the salespeople, like coming up to me uh -huh. and, um, I've had people come up to me at, you know, Trader Joe's, somebody has come across the parking lot, reached me in the cheese section and was just like, I just had to tell you, I just love, you know, your outfit. And it happened, it's happened enough times that my husband has actually trained me to carry at least one business card on me. Mm -hmm. And when that person goes through all that trouble to run across the parking lot, or even just to say something nice about what I'm wearing, it's usually about my scarf or a necklace or mm -hmm. my, you know, big chunky bracelet or something like that you know he's like Rachel those are the those are the people you want to work with and those are the people you yeah. want to know and if they're that nice chances are they hang out with some pretty nice people mm -hmm. so you know it's at first it was super awkward for me because I would be like a deer in the headlights like oh somebody saw me you know <laughs> like I want to go back home so um and now I just, you know, hand them my business card and say, my God, thank you so much. You know, here's mm -hmm. my business card. I'm on, I'm a designer. And, you know, if you know anyone and, you know, you can catch me on Facebook and I just, you know, let them know, um, I'm out there, I'm available. And, you know, those are great. It's another great way to. Well, and think of the opportunities that you miss if you're yeah. just all schlumpy. Going. Yeah. Like I know the times that I've gone out and I'm just wearing, you know, you're working on the, in the middle of a project and you have to run to Home Depot and you're not dressed. Yeah. That's when you're going to see. That is absolutely when you're going to see someone. Everybody in the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so much better to be ready and be able to talk to people and know that they're not going to go, did you see what Dixie was wearing? Oh my God. <laughs> And the other thing is practicality, though, because yeah. this is the thing. I am one layer. You know, today, what I have to do is I have to go in my garage and I have to sort of like, you know, after an installation, mm -hmm. my tools are in the wrong places. My, I've got trash bags. I've got, you yeah, know, because I'm like, I want to make way. sure. So I've got to go back in and organize it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one layer. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be in khakis and a tank top, you know, and I'm going to be ready to like do the work. But if I have to go out and I actually do have to go to the design center, and re re turn, return some memos, you know, I throw the, the vintage kimono back on and I am ready to be, you know, run into somebody or just. And be, I, like, I've actually okay. started kind of following that. So I've, we mentioned that I always wear jeans. jeans. Yeah. Um, I generally have on a black tank top. Yeah. 
And then Perfect. just depending yes. on what I'm doing, I'll change out my shirt. Yes. So yeah. it's literally like you were saying one thing. Now in this case, I have a sweater and a, another shirt on. Yeah. But, okay. Two layers versus whatever. It's so easy and just make sure, you know, that your hair is combed and my hair is never, my hair is rarely combed. That's why I wear scarves and it's rarely up. If you, if you don't have a beautiful scarf collection like Rachel does. Well, I don't like to, you know, combing your hair is hard. (laughs) (laughs) No, what is hard for me though, is I have, if you haven't seen me, if you've, or if you're only listening to me on SoundCloud, I am of Mexican descent and I have very black dyed hair, which underneath is silver. And so, (laughs) you know, I do not keep up on, you know, it's so hard to keep it black. And so scars are actually a lot of my trick to keeping the the pixie bed head away and hiding my regrowth. Yeah. (laughs) See, my, you're, you're all natural. You're, I'm, you're good. Yeah. You're just going I've got it. tons of gray. That, but you're just, lo- but you're embracing it. You're going with it, which I, I love. Am. I am. But that kind of just rolls with who I am as a person these days. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, my, my grandmother passed just before the new year. She uh-huh. was almost 90. And that woman passed with her hair colored. Oh, I'm going to do the same thing. That's what, that's my plan. <laughs> well, one thing I was looking at, my grandmother died, um, about almost two years ago now. And that woman had the most gorgeous skin. Did she? I can see that. You have gorgeous skin. She yeah. did. And that's, that's my goal. I don't mind if I go all white as long as I've got her face. Yes. Yes, exactly. So personal style and expression Mm -hmm. and why it matters. It matters because you're a personal brand. It matters because you want people to refer you. Mm -hmm. And it matters because if you're out and about, you could actually get leads. I have got leads. You know, when I'm in home goods with four carts full of stuff, trust me, people know that I am a designer Mm -hmm. and not just a regular stay at home mom. You know what I mean? Yep. Out you know, redoing that. You're not just going crazy. I am not on a shopping spree. No, I am working. And so people know that they know that because who goes with four and you could tell by the stuff in it. I'm sorry. You can tell the difference between what's in my cart (laughs) and what's in a non-designer's cart. Just saying. Well, yeah, I know it's about scale, huh? It's like, it's like people don't buy stuff that's big enough. I know. What's up so with that? Weird. They buy all these littles. What's that's a whole other topic. So <laughs> I know. So you want those business, or you want those business to business recommendations. Mm-hmm. You want, you know, people. You know, if you're shopping for paint for a client or picking something, you know, in Home Depot for a client, you could you could pick up. There are people confused in the paint section all yes. the time. I have met people in IKEA mm-hmm. all the time. One of actually so funny, one of my business partnerships, the Velvet Couch Sisters, I met her, we bumped carts in IKEA. We started really? talking and she basically said like I love what you've got going on. Uh-huh. Like, I want to I want to I want to intern with you. I want to shadow you and then that's how we we started the Velvet Couch Sisters. That's awesome. So I mean it's it's so, you know, you got to be out and you got to be looking the part and uh and even if you don't want to be, you will magnetize, you actually just magnetize it, you know, and so much easier to magnetize to you than go out and try to make something happen. Well, and how much more confident do you feel when you know that you look good? Oh my gosh. You You just walk it through the world differently, right? Absolutely. And that's kind of like my thing with them. One of my cheats, Rachel cheats, tweetable, (laughs) Rachel cheat, red (laughs) lipstick, Red lipstick is one of my cheats. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was, when I first came home and I was in transition of being a banker and starting my online entrepreneur, I, you know, some days I just would want to hole up in the house. And I just, one day I heard, put your red lipstick on and get out of the house. Mm -hmm. And ever since I got that download, it's like been my thing. I have worn red lipstick every day just because it, 
it does do something to me. It makes me a little bit bolder. Mm -hmm. My clothes sort of do the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. especially a lot of us creatives are introverts at heart. A lot aren't, a lot are extroverts, which, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> if you're an introvert, man, the antidote oh, yeah. is red lipstick and just expressing yourself in a creative way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think that wraps it up, huh, sis? I think so. I think that's, I think that's good. All right. The perfect place to stop. It is. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Design and Style. And uh, you can find us oh, on yes. Facebook at Design and Style podcast oh shoot i'll put the link in the show notes <laughs> we'll put all the links you'll be able to find us everything everywhere. will be there and we're also on design and style podcast dot club no design good grief i'm just messing it all up today design and style dot club design and style dot club that's it i'm putting myself in timeout <laughs> bye guys bye <laughs>